While Grant Stone can be divisive, they are seen as a quality, relatively new entrant to the boot world. My journey with them started in 2021 after exploration into entry-level brands like Thursday and Helm and classics like Thoroughgood and Red Wing. In my mind, I've moved from their classic refined makeups to seek more of their rugged looks. Is that true? <laughs> G'day, welcome back to Bootlosophy, my channel reviewing boots and sometimes other gear. If you're new here, my name is Tech, and I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands I live on here in Perth, Western Australia, the Wajik people. My journey with Grant Stone started with the purchase of this pair of diesel boots, the Coffee Suede, in a sale in July of 2021. My new boot collection, uh, discounting my longtime Timberland and RM Williams boots, uh, started in 2020 during the lockdowns of the pandemic. I'd bought a couple of boots from Amazon, a, a Soto Western boot was the first one, I think, and then a Thursday Captain. Uh, and then there was a bit of a frenzy during lockdown, adding Thoroughgoods, Chippewas, the good ones, uh, more Thursdays and a few Rhodes and Estoflex boots from Huckbury, uh, as well as a few secondhand Red Wings and probably my most expensive boots of that time uh, in a few Parkhurst models. And then I saw this in a sale and plunged into Grant Stone. This was, counting the old Tims and RMs and all the newer buys, my newer collection up to then, this was my 26th pair of boots. Yeah, it took me that long because I wasn't really sure about Grant Stone. Uh, not because of quality expectations, that had already been attested to by people like Giants in the boot review world, Dale Basista, Nick English and Karl Murawski. No, it was because I wasn't certain I liked the style for the price. At the time, I was seeing the refined diesel boots in the collection with makeups involving Chrome Excel, uh, Badalassi saddle tan, Italian veg tans and other smooth leathers. And their more refined Leo last as maybe not what I imagined when I closed my eyes and thought of a boot. In my mind, I was seeing an Iron Ranger or my Grail, the White's MP boot. And in the midst of that, I discovered Parkhurst, which seemed to co combine that modern service boot look with some interesting rugged leathers. I mean, Parkhurst offered a raw, unwaxed green spruce kudu. Grant Stone's forest kudu looked like a nicely polished and waxed green boot. You can see my POV video about my uh, comparison between Grant Stone and Parkhurst up there. To a large extent, uh, this is still the way I think. But at the time, having heard so much about Grant Stone, look, I had to break my duck sooner or later, and seeing this on sale at US 220, when they usually sold for about 290 or 300, it seemed an opportune time. But before we go on, a little bit about Grant Stone, uh, the brand. Grant Stone was started in 2016 by Wyatt Gilmore and Josh Lang. So it is relatively new. Uh, but jumping to the end at the start, <laughs> boy, have they grown in the last seven or eight years. When they started, they settled on a business model that was uh, direct-to-consumer, selling only from their website and cutting out the middleman retailers. We've all heard of that these days, right? But this did also mean a reduction in costs because you're not stocking large amounts of inventory in a large, expensive warehouse to send to retailers. There's rents and power and all that that you're cutting out. You only need to manufacture and store the stock that turns over quickly, meaning a small warehouse facility, as long as you keep marketing, uh, manufacture and shipping efficient. They also started with a mindset that built quality, not building a product to a price, but building to a quality. Uh, making something of a desired quality first, as efficiently as you can in terms of time and materials, will land you on a given price, and so be it if that is a fair price. So. They designed their boots and shoes with quality manufacture, fit and comfort in mind, all wrapped up in some really elegant lasts. This involved choosing top tanneries to source their leathers from and quality Benz leather from the US for internal materials like insoles, welts and midsoles. Construction methods had to uh, match that quality as well. So Goodyear welting, uh, leather heel counters, cork fillers and steel shanks. 
And finally, labor costs were in the mix. Making the boots in China definitely means a reduction in manufacturing costs, starting from labor costs, but also including property costs in factory expenses. And I would guess also the ability to backfill ships and freight carriers and thus obtaining lower background costs like storage and shipping. Having a family history with the family uh, of the owners of the factory obviously helps because with that comes trust and the willingness to accommodate. On top of this all, from what I can see, they run efficient systems from uh, nearly just-in-time systems at the manufacturing end to procedures and processes followed on inspections, shipping, reviews and innovation. Any business can improve quality and reduce costs by introducing standard operating procedures that their people are trained in, supervised over and that are regularly reviewed and inspected. From what I can see, Grantstone does all this really well. And so, unarguably, they produce incredibly good products at prices uniformly below what that value dictates. But now let me take you through my journey. Boot number 26 in my collection was the Diesel in Coffee Suede and uh, on a wedge sole. I was actually <laughs> astounded by the build quality. From the Charles F. Stead soft suede to the comfort of the wedge sole, uh, to the shape and fit of the Leo Last, and literally blown away by the construction, including the almost invisible welt joint. See my review up there. Uh, but it wasn't the service boot aesthetic I was exploring at the time because of that wedge sole. So Grantstone continued to bubble in my mind a bit faster now that I'd seen the quality for myself. And the next month, in August of 2021, boot number 31 joined the collection. This diesel in Badalasi Carlo's Saddle Tan. At the time, these were 370 US dollars in the midst of my uh, spending a few hundreds on secondhand boots from eBay. So it was a big leap in price. But I did really fancy the Saddle Tan color on their website. And as a full price boot, I thought might as well try something different other than the standard browns that I've been getting in most other boots. I still wasn't entirely sold though because I still thought it leaned toward the more refined and dressy with the leather sole, uh, like a service boot but also like a dress boot. Still, I did appreciate the quality of the leather and the construction, so I, I didn't dismiss the brand. And then, uh, boot number 39 caught my attention. The brass boot was announced, initially in the saddle tan on a white wedge sole. Too much like the Red Wing Mokto, I thought. And a few weeks later, out comes the Earth Waxy Commander on a commando lug sole. Yeah, okay, now that was different. So my trigger finger clicked. <laughs> the fact that it was only US 298 at the time helped the clicking finger. At some stage, about here in late 2021, Grantstone was inserting itself into being one of my favorite brands, certainly in terms of fit and comfort. The dressier service boot design in the diesel was definitely growing on me by that time, helped by the comfort of the fit and the quality of the materials. The brass boot in earth just gave it a, a, a different dimension. And this became my go-anywhere boot at the time, walking on the forest trails that my wife and I take most weekends and in our holidays. I was definitely getting a good impression of Grant Stone. I had some good times when I bought this boot, as you can see here. Then, move forward to Black Friday 2021, and I snagged the Diesel in Black Chrome XL, again, on a leather sole. So you see, my mind was still wrapped around Grant Stone being a dressier brand, and I chose this instead of the Black Chrome XL on a black rubber sole that you can get, because I thought the uh, leather sole and the natural leather edge framing the black for a refined look would really go well with a suit. This is, I have to say, my favorite dressy black boot. This was uh, boot number 41 in the collection. I'm actually astounded I bought so many in 2021 because it wasn't over. At about the same time around Black Friday, I saw this pair of Edward boots on eBay, very lightly worn for 237 Australian dollars. Too good to miss, I bought boot number 42. I think I was pretty much into my Grandstone make some damn fine boots, even though they might be dressier than what I'm thinking kind of phase. Um, having said that though, the earth brass boots and these tobacco wax commando uh, uh, Edward boots 
was seeing me veer into their more rugged uppers. At about this time, I joined Stitchdown, and at that time, uh, Stitchdown offered a discount on Grant Stone, so what the hell? Uh, I had to settle tan. Let's see what the tan Essex looks like in comparison. And this was boot number 46, arriving in January of 2022. As you can see, I was trending to Grant Stone, even though a lot of my other buys included Parkhurst boots, uh, and catching more Red Wings, Alden and Alan Edmonds on eBay at the time. My taste was still very much service boot, but my collection had grown to the extent that I sought different leathers. Uh, the older these tan Essex boots get, Essex is from Horween, by the way, uh, the older they get, the better the leather ages. You can see my long-term patina review up there. I can honestly say this pair of diesels in tan Essex are my most complimented pair of boots. Short, hairy men stop me in the street to say how attractive they are. <laughs> I, I think it's the shape and the colour. The design of the diesel is, is sleek. It's refined. Yet the colour of the tan Essex mellows into this golden orange, unlike the saddle tan, which becomes a dark honey. Even short, hairy men don't find it effete on my feet. I once made the mistake of waxing it after a coat of uh, Venetian shoe cream, which made it way too shiny for the semi-matte uh, Horween Essex leather. But I uh, ran a hairdryer over it, as taught me by Andrew Savisco from Parkhurst, which got the wax to uh, kind of suck back into the leather, so uh, that it's come back to this kind of semi-matte finish. My journey then took a vacation, because I went for over a year before I bought my next pair of Grant Stone boots these field boots in saddle tan. I got these in May of 2023 as seconds for, uh, I think it was 280 US, which is a bargain because I, I honestly cannot see why these were seconds. It's certainly nothing to do with uh, construction quality or any defect in the leather. Potentially the leather was already a little dark and that might have been it. I think I took my year plus vacation because I was kind of sated with diesels and Edwards and the brass. Uh, in my opinion, was best in the earth or possibly the bison, but mm, too similar. When the field boot came out, it was a must. A different design, a variant mock toe, my first Grandstone proprietary wedge sole, uh, the saddle tan which I loved on my diesel, uh, and it was discounted. That was boot number 85 and my seventh Grandstone. Now, I'm pretty sure it won't be my last because in the mid 300s, the quality beats anything else I can think of. But I'm not sure I'll be back to buying one a month for a number of reasons. First of all, my mind still tells me that for the quality of build, uh, for the refined finishing and the stitching, the way the welts are put together, uh, the welt stitching, the design of the panels, particularly in the Diesel and the Edward, uh, the last. My mind tells me they're refined dressy boots. Seeing them in Kudu, Ostrich, uh, Bison, it's cognitive dissonance. <laughs> I'm not sure that subconsciously I like them too much that way. So um, second, that means that my next purchases will need to be smooth grain uppers that I haven't tried yet. Perhaps a Capto in uh, Danone leather or an Ottawa in say a Chrome XL. Those don't give me that cognitive dissonance. At the same time though, they are coming out with uh, rugged leathers on the brass and feel boots and the new garrison boot shows promise for the more rugged boots that are a little more to my taste these days. Finally, while I, I totally get that for the mid 300s, you get probably a mid $400 boot, it's still in that price range where I could go for other brands like my favorite Parkers, if they ever came out with more leather variety, or try others like more classic Red Wings on the, uh, or, or the lower end P&W models. Uh, like say the White's Perry I'd like to try, or maybe a Drew's Logger boot, something quite different. Or maybe try another Indonesian brand. It is a crowded pool, that three to $500 range. So what next? I missed this year's Black Friday because I was busy and uh, actually otherwise committed. But I'd be on the lookout for deals in a Chrome Excel or Suede Ottawa, and I'll definitely get a garrison when a leather I like pops up. The selection of Capto boots seems to be reducing, so I may get one of those before they discontinue, uh, if I can pick up a second or one on sale, or maybe if I really like one of the leathers. No, my Grantstone journey is definitely not finished. It has slowed, and I'm a little more discerning now, but I do like them. I would still buy them. Well, it's on record now, isn't it? 
I have a few more Grantstone boots to get. I have said it. <laughs> when I actually get them, it will be a combination of a few things in the win. Uh, what else is in the competition at the time, uh, getting a good price, uh, and the uppers they offer. Anyway, let's see. And you'll see if you click on like and subscribe and let YouTube bring you more reviews from me and remind you when I upload. Make sure you follow my unfinished journey. Until the next time, take care and see you soon.